Our invitation today will be given by a guest of Commissioner Cantrell. Judging Commissioners, our guest pastor today is Kyle Radell, who is the lead pastor of the Parks Church. It's a growing and vibrant church in McKinney, Texas. Before moving to McKinney, he served as the associate pastor for First at Firewheel Church in Garland. He will be graduating this May with his master's degree from Dallas Theological Seminary, and he's been married to his wife, Tessa, for three years. Pastor, thank you for coming down. Thank you. Good morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you, Lord, for this day. God, this day that you have given. Father, we pray that your will would be done today. God, I thank you for these leaders and these men and women that gather in this room. Father, we pray that today you would be glorified. Father, I pray for clarity of mind, clarity of speech. Father, I pray, God, if you have set the, your hand upon these men and women, that you would lead them and that you would guide them. Father God, may your will be done today as we pray it in your son's name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to this meeting of the Dallas County Commissioner's Court. We'll consider our official agenda, recess for an informal work session, then hear from registered speakers. The court will then convene in closed session to consider items as allowed by law. We have one resolution this morning from Commissioner Cantrell. Judge and Commissioners, this is a resolution that myself and Dr. Garcia will be jointly presenting uh, at a luncheon today to Special Agent in charge of the FBI office, Robert Casey Jr. So I won't read it here, but I'll go ahead and move its adoption. Second. All those in favor? Uh, oh, well, okay. I was going, since they were doing it jointly, I yeah, would hope would yield, yeah, a second. Second. Yield, yield a second. Yield a second, yeah. Second. Okay. And I would like to uh, join in that resolution too. He's been very, very helpful. And I'd like to join in that resolution, too, as my nephew's in the FBI, and it never hurts to be nice to the higher-ups. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, why don't we make that a five-signature resolution, then? Uh, okay. That would be great. Uh, do we need a vote on that? Just by, yeah, yeah, no, no. You uh, got, just come by and roll on? Okay. Yeah, no, you got to vote, vote on it. Vote on it. Uh, all right, uh, here, a motion to make that a five. Motion five. and second. Motion and second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay, let's, we will now consider um, item 8, our consent agenda. Well, I'll move to consider agenda. Uh, Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Quarter nine. All right. Uh, now, item 9 is our awarding of bids and RFPs. Is there uh, any questions or a motion on the bids or RFPs? I'll move the approval of the one, uh, one, uh, one bid. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we will now consider court orders 10 through 37, but not 31, which has been pulled. Are there any questions or a motion on those court orders? Uh, First of all, well, in order to get questions, I only got to move them. And so I'll move court orders 10 uh, through 38 and um, 37, and then pull court order uh, 31. And I second, but I do want to uh, make a comment, Judge, if, if I can. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the purchasing department for adding, as you all notice in our briefings, uh, the NCTRCA um, certification is now here uh, for all of you to see. We have two of the eight court orders that are in our agenda today, so I want to thank you all for doing this. I think it will give us a better idea of how many uh, companies are certified minority vendors. And one, one more thing, um, as I was reviewing the agenda, I realized that there are several um, extensions, you know, uh, item 28, mm -hmm. 29, and uh, 27. And the 27 and 28 do say it's the final or it's the first. But the last one, 29, only says an extension. And, uh, and I would like to know, uh, when I review this, if it's possible to know how many times this contract can be extended? Mm -hmm. And if it's the first one, the second, the third, right. or? Right, We took, well, go ahead, I'll yield. We'll make sure with that we include that going forward. This will be the first 
Okay, so on the 29th is the first. Okay. Okay. Well, I just didn't know if. Thank you so much. And with that, I second the motion. All those in favor? Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just a, a comment on uh, court order number 16. That's the uh, Clean Air Task Force uh, Admissions Advisory Board. And I think the Sheriff's Department will do an outstanding job. Uh, the, the, uh, my concern is the timing because we've been awaiting a big grant. And uh, it, with the dissolution of the uh, the advisory board and the bylaws. I, I, I hope this does not jeopardize the grant. So uh, shall be abstaining from that vote, number 16. Okay. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and, yeah. Yeah. Judge, with regards to court order 16, I would, to eliminate any type of, of um, confusion over supervision, those positions really need to be transferred over to the sheriff. Well, that's, that, okay. Yeah. That, yes, that's part. Yeah. Okay. That's why. Yeah. Okay. They are. Okay. That's exactly. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah. That's exactly right. what we're doing. I just want to make sure because I'd heard from some others that they were still going to stay no, slotted no, at the constable's no, office. All, no. 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 Okay. No. The, the paper. The paper that I gave, gave to all of you. Okay. It basically. That talked, was my understanding. Yes. But I yes. heard differently. No. Maddie, did you under you understand what we're I didn't give about? her a copy of the paper. Oh, okay. Yeah, she hadn't seen the paper, but I gave it all to all the members of the court. Okay. So, no. Who is the so, no. so those five, those positions are five? Is that correct? That's Would be correct. transferred over to the sheriff's department. That's correct. And uh, Judge, I wanted to add, you know, Mr. Brown, Mr. Martin, you do feel confident because I mean, I listened to what Commissioner Dickey just said, and we don't want to lose any money. But according to what you have researched and what you know, as long as we keep the same structure and nobody's moved, the grant should be okay. No money should be lost. We're not changing the financial position of any of the positions or the finances in any way. That's cool. We should be fine. If we do make changes to that, then we'll have to go get grant approval. But that's, but that's with any grant. That's, that's with any That's any grant. That's correct. The existing criteria is yeah. Well, the advisory committee was not part of the original requirements of the grant. That's so correct. We did internally. Exactly. Right. So there's no reason at this point then to seek um, clarification from the grantor, the prospective grantor, as to this change. We will be advising the grantor as part of our normal program updates of what we've done, right. but we're not necessarily needing to get approval from the grantor. Uh, and, and and let the record be real clear. Again, this was something that this court did internally. There was not a proviso in the grant for that establishment. That was legacy. In the got caught in question. Okay. Um, and. Anyone else? Call, call, uh, I'm going to uh, call that question. Did we, did we already have a motion and a second? Yes, yes sir. Right, call the question. Vote, please. Um, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay. get, but the motion carry the judge. The judge, if you just show, I heard abs abstention on 16. And I think that Commissioner GT, you know, has done a good job on this task force, and she will continue to do it. So. Uh, and, and, I, and I second that. I think she's done a good job and, and, and will continue to. All right, well, that takes us to uh, recessing for our, our uh, briefing agenda. So we're now recessed for our, for our uh, briefing special, our session of items to be considered uh, in a subsequent session. Mr. Martin. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Item number one, actually, we're going to do the addendum first. The Office of Security and Emergency Management recommends change the aim of Office of Security and Emergency Management to the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. I believe Director Chambers is here this morning to mention a few words. Director, please come on up. Against Dallas County Commissioners. We're very honored to have you consider a change in our office designation to Homeland Security and Emergency Management, although this would just be on paper. I think this better encompasses the full scope of our mission to include the mitigation risk assessments that we do. I'm really proud uh, to give some re recognition to my staff today who's been getting out to every city and jurisdiction in the county lately to assess their needs and really develop the cooperation that we need to represent them better, the state, and also to our federal counterpart. So I'd like to thank Mr. Jones, Roderick, 
for his continued efforts, also Scott Greason. And uh, Ben White, Chief White, and his team have really helped us align ourselves with the security aspects of the continuity of operations program that we're going to launch February 2nd. Uh, the sheriff has been great lately uh, for me to communicate with leading up to the Super Bowl, as well as the constant communication with Fire Marshal. I think we have a really excellent team here, and I see good things ahead moving forward as well with our federal partnership with FEMA. Do we need to wait to make sure we don't mess up any, anything, any legacy or anything? Pardon me? <laughs> Mess up any? <laughs> no, our mission is not to mess anything up. <laughs> That's for sure. No, we're really excited. Uh, January 24th, as you know, we're announcing a public awareness campaign with Federal Emergency Management Agency. So hopefully no nothing will get messed up during the press conference. No, I, I, I was really being facetious. I was talking about legacies, but nonetheless, okay, that's all right. No, don't worry. <laughs> well, one thing, meeting with a lot of the Super Bowl folks, you know, in all honesty, we need to be thinking of the, the, the citizen safety above and beyond any type of event. But what the Super Bowl has enabled us to do is come together as a region in North Texas and really figure out where our weaknesses are. Uh, we've run through a lot of live, you know, live training exercises with uh, the federal government, Dallas police, and has really given us a good idea of where we are and where we need to go. Maybe, maybe you're getting ready for the 254 school districts as opposed to the present 1,000, that the bill that is before the House for the consolidation of school districts in the counties. Never, <laughs> that that don't. that would be out of my lane. But yeah, right. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to, to take this opportunity to recognize the hard work of the folks that stand behind me. Good job. And appreciate your support in getting our name changed to Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Definitely, and you know that we have to continue to work with all the entities, you know that conform uh, Homeland Security. I know that the exercises I I attended one. I mean our. You know, an eye opener, an eye opener of what are the different ramifications that in a state of emergency can happen. So, congratulations! I definitely support the change. Let, and, let me just uh, judge, if I can, one one question: um, How does this coordinate? And uh, Mr. Thompson, maybe you want to. How does this with with the MRC? I mean, MRC and and all that's going on. Is that is there a collaboration here, uh, or is that? Do we just consider that to be kind of separate and distinct? Because we've always collaborated I understand. So our point is our public health response, and they have another area they're focused on. We're in our lane in terms of public health response. We're in line with what we need to do in preparation for the upcoming Super Bowl that's related to the sales activity. I've heard that term before, but I, you know, I don't particularly like it. Didn't like it then, don't like it now. Right, I, I know. Well, and, and I guess that's what I'm asking, Ms. Chambers, sure. uh, because I understand being chair of public health, but, but this whole, the, you know, I, I just didn't know how much they were in the mix. I, I know, I, I recognize, you know, your authority and, and where you guys are. Well, and, and God forbid, let's let's say the mid, mishap is uh, the some of the exercises that we've talked about on the MRC side. Without you being... No, 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 we're, we're involved. Yeah. No, no, the key point is... Okay, 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 good, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, That's all I need Just, just I'll, I'll add a little. The public health piece that uh, Director Thompson deals with is, is probably one of the most critical we have in emergency management. Okay. Um, get, and so we really, I mean, we're definitely collaborative, but so he's got... want to make sure he's in, there in the loop. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. No times you haven't been in the loop. Okay. <laughs> okay. New day. New day. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And, and on this name change... Um, uh, this is something I spoke to uh, the counterparts in Harris County who'd already made the name change, um, as well as Nim Kidd, who is the uh, uh, chief director for Homeland Security for the state of Texas, and Tony Russell, 
who is a Region 6 FEMA coordinator. They were all in favor of this change, uh, feeling that it better uh, describes the duties of this office. And uh, so with, with that in mind, I've, I've recommended uh, this change. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Director Chambers. We'll move forward with that quote. Thank you. Appreciate it. Item 1, Health and Human Services, 1A. That court order was on your phone. And it's item number 25. 1B, recommends the acceptance of the award from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for operation of the Dallas County Housing Choice Voucher Program. Item 2, County Judge, recommends approving the initiative to promote ethics reform and greater transparency for Dallas County. Judge? Uh, certainly. Um, we've got a, 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 a briefing on this, couple, a couple of typos in there, so let's uh, uh, run through that uh, very quickly if we could. Um, this would call for uh, all, all court orders uh, and the accompanying uh, contracts to be in a word searchable format and available on the internet. Uh, this is not a go back provision since we don't have a very good way to do that, uh, but going forward, we would have all, all uh, uh, contracts, and I'd like for us to do that from the, at least from the time of this new court forward, um, in a word searchable format so it's easier for the press and the public uh, to see exactly what we do um, and exactly what we voted on. Um, the minutes of the commissioner's court will be available for at least uh, two calendar years, um, and um, that would exclude any uh, uh, public sp uh, speaker comments as well as audio and video uh, for, for two years. And again, that's a go forward provision since we didn't have audio and video before, uh, that that would be available for at least two years, uh, again, excluding the public speaker uh, portion, um, uh, available online for, for uh, uh, people to easily search and find what they're looking for. The attendance of each court member would be noted at the establishment of a quorum, uh, that we've already started doing that um, each, each uh, week. Um, we would uh, call for all elected officials to, um, well, for the posting of all elected officials' uh, financial disclosures, uh, campaign finance reports for the last two years um, online in a searchable format. Currently, that's available if you go to the Elections Department, make a request, give your name. Um, you can get those. But we'd like for those just to be available online so people without giving their name can easily search those. Um, uh, a financial disclosure form um, uh, listing outside uh, income and potential conflicts of interest on uh, key county um, uh, employees and those key employees um, uh, uh, and, and county elected officials. The uh, key employees would be the county administrator, assistant administrator, um, uh, department heads, uh, uh, commissioner's court, um, executive staff, I think. Um, also, we, we'd ask uh, a requirement that executive staff uh, who leave government service uh, wait two years before working on a matter for, for remuneration um, on matters that directly invec, uh, affect or involve Dallas County. Um, and registration of lobbyists to the full extent provided by state law, as well as a prohibition. Well, we, we can't prohibit because we don't have the, the authority to do it. But a, an encouragement and um, an allowance of people who are uh, bidding on RFPs to uh, assign an addendum on, on their RFP bid that reads as follows. I will not give a donation to any Dallas County elected official or candidate for office um, whose office or potential office has an involvement in this bidding process during the pendency of this bid through 30 days after this bid is let. Um, I believe that is uh, all, all of them uh, at this time, but, but I want to uh, also say that in uh, uh, coming up with, with this transparency uh, policy, it was uh, um, uh, an e a, a joint effort because what you'll see are um, components of both my transparency plan from, from uh, before I was elected as well as components of Dr. Garcia's transparency plan. 
uh, before she was um, elected, and um, uh, the the ideas uh, on on trying to to get some control over over donations during the pendency of an RFP um, to the extent that that we can do that. Uh, those uh, really great suggestions came from from uh, Commissioner Dickey, so I want to commend Commissioner Dickey for for her her help on that. Uh, may I? Uh yeah, I yes. just make a yes, comment. When we put those contracts in a, a form so that they would be transparent to the public, uh, also I, I think we should include any subcontractors that might that that would be in that contract or any subcontractors that were added, and also change orders in uh, uh, how much that is because the the, the contract might be, for instance, for two hundred thousand dollars. But there's a change order for a uh, hundred and three thousand dollars, so uh, the public needs to know that as well. And I agree. I totally agree with that. Uh, mm -hmm. The same thing with minority certifications, and those um, numbers have to be included as well mm -hmm. uh, with the percentage of participation. Mm -hmm. so, well, and if you want, to, if you want to get that that uh, technical, let's let's talk about who the ethnic minority is. And since we're bringing that up. Uh, you know, I've been on this court for 26 years, and we've been at 25 percent. And it's, I think it's time to elevate it. I totally agree with that, and I think this will give us an opportunity to bring not only transparency, like just Jenkins says, but diversity to the mix. I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more with you, Commissioner. Well, you know, one thing about diversity, uh, one thing about us on the uh, Montgomery bus boycott, we had diversity on the bus. We were just in the back of it. I'm on inclusion. Good point. We need to be sure that everybody is in the bus in the front and back. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, I just want to say thank you to all of you colleagues. I know that Judge Jenkins passed uh, this list through all of us. And I think that there's, it's never too late to bring accountability uh, to the process. One of the things that I hear over and over again during the campaign is how little information people had uh, about the commissioner's court. And I think that if we're really going to talk about a new day, we need to start with how much, you know, we want people to know about us. And I think this gives us an opportunity to do exactly that. I want to thank you, Josh Jenkins, for taking the leadership, putting everything together, pass it through all of us, and here we have the result. Uh, I just wanted to add that um, I am very uh, happy to report that we also talked to uh, my staff with Bruce Shepard. And he's ready to look for some of the funds to do the campaign uh, report as well. You know, I think it's due. Most municipalities do it. And we're ready to move that forward as part of, of this effort. And, um, and with that, I will, uh, with gusto, would we'll like to move. Well, we it's, this yeah, it's, no, it's not. It's on briefing. It's, it's a briefing. But, but, okay. but, but, but it's not, good to be anxious. Yeah, <laughs> right. But, well, well, you know, there's a couple of uh, other things. Um, Right now, you're videoing. Uh, at some point in time, given this, we're going to have to move to video on our own. Then it becomes a quote government record. Right. I think so. I so, think that's uh, right so idea. there. I mean, there's a lot of things that just kind of hadn't been gone through here. So, I mean, it, right now, as I said, with you're you're doing it, but uh, it, it it should become a government record. And, and we're working on that, uh, Mr. Bra uh, Mr. Martin is, you know, and IT have been. Uh, very, you know, open. Right now we're going to have the five meetings because of the capacity that we have with IT. And after that we start recording a new one. But we will keep those CDs, uh, Commissioner, for record. Mr. Martin and the county will be the owners of that. I won't have absolutely no problem. With okay. That. Then there, there's there got to be a process. And I guess the lawyers right. will work on the process in terms of family, making sure that we can take, we take it in becomes part of the government record. At some point we need to talk about right now, Dr. Garcia's. Well, I understand. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, that's what I, that's exactly that's what I'm speaking to. We, we need to get that on the agenda and RFP for that. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, I talked to an independent uh, videographer yesterday about this very thing. And uh, what that person suggested, who's a, you know, taxpayer, he said, well, you could use an independent videographer or, or contract that out, but that wouldn't be the most cost-effective way to do this. Um, you could buy a camera with a wide angle that would get the front of this room. Um, 
and uh, run some mics that are specific to that camera to, to these two tables and five speakers and um, do it yourself for relatively small amounts of cost. So we should probably look at both avenues, putting out for bid with independent contractor videographers, but also just a, a fixed camera up there underneath the clock, say, that, that's wide angle, so that you know one of our people can turn this thing on and it's relatively you know, cost effective. And I, I guess in keeping with the clerk of the court, Mr. Warren would become the uh, custodian of the record. Absolutely. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm enthused that you guys are on board with what I've been trying to do for the last couple of years. Uh, Judge Jenkins, uh, you may not be aware of, but we already have all of uh, Dallas County's historical record or the Commissioner's Court's historical records old contracts, old RFPs, everything that we have already in a searchable format. But the issue that we have going forward is how, how much of that data are we going to make available to the public? If we're talking about from 1846 to current, you're talking about a lot of data. If you're talking about only like a certain time period, like we're over the course of maybe two or four years, then of course that, make, that becomes a more uh, reasonable solution, or should I say a more cost-effective solution, because we have to buy um, uh, terabyte hard drive so that we could store that information on to make it available to the public and link it to Dallas County's website. I'm not sure if you're aware, but we already have an RFP out with a turnkey solution for voting, uh, uh, commissioner's court presence, <coughs> excuse me, as well as um, uh, video and uh, the court hearings. I'm not sure when that's going to be posted, but uh, we're already um, on track. It's just a matter of, of, of us sitting down and making sure uh, and actually establishing process with IT on how we're going to make that information available. Mr. Warren, okay. are we able to have um, to, to see change orders and additional uh, subcontractors with that's, a contractor? That, that's a very good question because we want to link a, uh, a prior order with that with the changed with the change order a change order and an, and, a, and an amendment to the contract. So if you look for one, you'll find the other. So that's correct. That's oh, what great. We're doing. Great. Well, I so think it should at least go back for a couple of years or, or while those contracts are in force. Maybe. Yes, ma'am. Uh, with regard to campaign finance reports, uh, I'm sure you the, the election, you know, the election code says uh, data filing plus two years. But the issue that uh, we have is with regard to uh, personal finance statements. With that information, part of that information will have to be redacted, redacted. for professional, well, for uh, safety reasons as well as uh, security. I, I'm not as concerned about the personal finances as, as I am about their campaign, their campaign finance, finance report. reports. Yeah. If, if there's a security risk to, to people on that, then we don't need to put, you know, post that. But, but I think it's, it's important that the public knows who is giving money and that people who are interested in that can search it without having to give their name or, or, or drive down to the elections department. Mm -hmm. Actually, I I'd already had an agreement with the uh, civil DA's office. As you know, with every PIA request we get, my office get for campaign finance reports. I already know the answer is going to be yes. So if someone comes in, I'll give them that info. I give them if I have them before they are transported to elections. We give them a copy of that information. Just have them a complete a uh, request form so that we'll know who actually. So we'll keep a record of who actually requested those records. Good. Right. Well, I just want to thank Commissioner Garcia for doing for paying for this. Uh, and starting the videoing of our meetings. This is something we've needed to do for a long time, and I think that your generosity has given us a jump start in this process. Actually, uh, also, uh, Commissioner Garcia and myself, and I think Mr. Martin, we're going to visit a couple of counties who's already uh, automated their process, including the, the videoing of the, of the court meetings. With different um, kind of uh, options that you can link and make it very easily, especially for some of us that still like to mark everything, you can do it now to the computers and do electronic signature as well. So, hey, we will eliminate all the paper coming <laughs> and going. You know, and, and I want to thank you, Honorable Warren, for you know, well, you know, having more than anything some of the funding. So, Absolutely. Uh, we Judge. really appreciate that. Yes, sir. I'll make a, just a few points. Along those lines, I think a list of vendors ought to be kept by purchasing that, that shows the contractors, subcontractors, and the key players with each one of those organizations. And it ought to be a, a totally separate list that's uh, viewable and searchable. And you can link it back to campaign uh, documents. And I think on our RFPs, you know, I like the language about not giving donations, but we have put into certain RFPs where 
once an RFP is let, really a vendor, vendor or vendor shouldn't be able to come and politic court members. <laughs> so in my opinion, there ought to be an even stricter deal on it to where it pro prohibits any type of contact with court members mm -hmm. or their staff while that RFP is on the street. <clears throat> But uh, anyway. that would be yeah, well, that, that, well, that hasn't historically been the problem. It's right. been the problem with court members. I understand. Yeah, and I don't, know, I don't know how enforceable that would be. And then on the last thing, yeah, on the uh, county administrator, assistant administrator, what I want to be careful of, and I don't know how this does it with the language directly affects or involves Dallas County, you know, there's some key positions within the region that if, if some of our key people left, and went to such as NTTA. Right, I know. We want to be careful that we don't put the county at a disadvantage. I mean, those are key, key positions and also benefit Dallas County from having that relationship. So and somehow we need to, you know, because we'll, that... We'll work to make... That's not what I'm, yeah. I'm trying to... Oh, I understand. To, here, here's my concern. Going to work so, for a vendor. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Someone's working for, for me, for instance, and I don't know it, but they're going to go work for the vendor in six months. Right. Um, and they're advising me as to uh, things, and they don't mean anything bad about it, but they've, they've right. become um, a believer in the vendor, and right. I'm unaware of this thing that's going to happen in the future, and, and so without knowing it, it taints what I believe um, is my vote to solely interested in the taxpayers, but by the fault of no one, it's tainted somewhat. I agree. So I, think I want to stop that from happening. And I, to do uh, that. I would still, I would like to put in Commissioner Cantrell's suggestion that if somebody, uh, that during the pendency of an RFP or the uh, initial notice of RFP, that vendors can't visit us because it's a real good way, uh, whether it's enforceable or not, that it's a real good way to say, hey, you know, just ethically we, we have agreed not to do this. Because sometimes vendors come and they don't portray themselves as vendors. They just want to educate you about the process, and then you find out they're selling a certain uh, service. So I think that would would be a good uh, a good thing to put forth. Uh, and, and on that, um, you know, one thing I'd want to make sure we could still do is, for instance, we've got a vendor contract coming up with our tax collector. Mm -hmm. Um, soon, and I understand from from um, other elected officials that frequently you'll be called by a constituent who says, "Well, my taxes, I'm being mistreated in some way." I would want to be able to still have elected officials contact those whoever, if the person who's now doing our taxes is also vending, seeking to do it again. I want to make sure we're still able to call them and say, "What's going on with Joe Smith's?" you know, my constituents' mm -hmm. property at 1234 Smith Street. We'd still be able to oh, do absolutely. that. correct. Okay. It's, it's just regarding the, the actual securing of the contract. Right. So we would probably, we could do a prescription from them contacting us regarding the securing of a, of a contractor so extension. Any communications the regarding the RFP. RFP, okay. Yeah. We could still talk to them about the specific taxpayer that called our office. And to your office judge so okay we see what we currently okay. yeah that's yeah, that's okay, great that's yeah already, that's already so we it with and I hope we'll put the process when you talk about registration of lobbyists we need a process in place that's easy right. to understand and easy to follow uh, and I see uh, our, our DA but but before we get to that let me uh, on this transparency let's finish a couple of things I see Kevin Kraus and Ken Keltoff here I want to put you guys on the spot but two years back, if, if we post two years back, apparently he can do that. Would that cover most of your needs? I see a yes. and They never had it, so. <laughs> two years back? Better than nothing. Better than So can you work on two years back from right now? Yes, the, 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 uh, the time frame isn't an issue. It's how much money we want to invest and to. Uh, well, two is cheaper than four, right? <laughs> two is cheaper than four. Why don't you come back and tell us how much two costs? Okay, I'll, I'll get with IT and see how, what size of uh, um, external hard drive. Yeah, but hell, just for the contrary, hell, Kevin, I asked you for three. You know, what the hell, you know. Did you ask for three? No, he will. <laughs> I, 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 can, I, I can tell you historically, if whatever's there, they'll ask for that, and, and they'll want to know if you can go back at least a year further than that. Yeah, really. 
I'll take it up for two and bring well, the see, Get us the number for two, but can but, you do it by next week? Uh, hopefully I can, but but I, I think we should do, instead of two years, do four. I, just just you get, we, bring us both. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because you know we're we're it's gonna be a tight budget year, but I like four better than two. Here's our, our district attorney is here today. Uh, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my first time to address the court. Um, uh, Glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. Um, and the conversation and the dialogue that you're having, I w would like to commend you on that about transparency. Um, one other issue that you probably um, I would suggest uh, that you may take under consideration uh, over the last few years. Unfortunately, uh, when uh, we would be dealing with a very sensitive legal issue, um, we would find uh, that some of the lawyers uh, representing commissioners individually would also be lawyers representing the commissioner's court. And I think maybe there should be a disclosure, um, at least by the commissioners, um, if uh, that lawyer is under contract with the commissioner's court at the time, that there may be a very sensitive legal issue. Uh, that may arise where a particular commissioner may be at issue. Uh, I think it's only fair to the public uh, that they understand uh, and know. Uh, and the question may, be, may uh, be asked if that lawyer is being paid through the commissioner's court to represent a commissioner on an individual basis. Uh, further, um, I've had the opportunity to talk to some of you, um, and I really do appreciate you all reaching out and inquiring as to whether or not the district attorney's office had the expertise on a particular issue that you're going to be dealing with going forward, and that's redistricting. Uh, fortunately, uh, we've had a chance to review that. Um, and as you all are aware, uh, there was an issue with the prior court as to whether or not uh, the district attorney had the responsibility of making uh, the determination of who would represent this court. Um, uh, the law um, basically says that uh, in any litigation matter, that responsibility falls uh, within the DA's, the district attorney's role. Um, and going forward, um, when we're talking about advice and counsel, that falls directly with uh, the commissioners. Uh, so uh, when you're talking about redistricting, obviously we don't have the expertise to do that within our office. There's no litigation at this point uh, that uh, we will have to deal with. Um, but the mere fact that you at least contacted our office to inquire as to, we, as to whether or not we had that expertise and the fact that you wanted to involve uh, the district attorney's office as we move forward. I think it bodes well for the court, um, but it is your responsibility. And we do, uh, because of the sensitive nature of redistricting, foresee that, that there may be some litigation. So we all need to be on the same page as we move forward. So I just want the public to understand that. The commissioners already know that, and we do appreciate how you have worked with our office uh, for the last three weeks. Well, thank you very much. And, and, and let me say that we want to keep you in the loop on, on the redistricting because of the possibility that there could be litigation um, down the road. And, and I look forward to uh, a continued good relationship with your office. And, um, you know, I look forward to a, a new day in the, in the work between the commissioner's court and, and the DA's office. And I, I thank you. Thank you for, for coming Thank you. coming down. L let me ask you on the, the first, back to the first thing, mm -hmm. so we can add that, um, you know, perhaps. Are you saying like, for instance, I'm represented individually by John Smith, sure. and then John Smith also has a contract to represent the commissioner's court uh, on a matter of, say, a lawsuit uh, with the county regarding someone suing us? Well, let's just, let me give you an example. I mean, there's a gray area, obviously. Um, as elected officials, we find ourselves in litigation all the time just because of our elected office, which has nothing to do with county business. Um, and what I found um, as a DA of Dallas County, I would uh, be put in a position to negotiate uh, with a lawyer who had nothing to do with the issues at hand as it relates to Dallas County, but that lawyer represented a particular um, uh, commissioner. And I, this, I, I or our office thought that was way out of bounds. And so um, I don't think it's anything wrong uh, with an elected official who, because obviously when you make a choice uh, of a lawyer to represent you, or if we make the choice, obviously they do a very good job. And so I, mean, I think it would correlate into a person individually being represented by that law firm. I think at least there should be a disclosure uh, that that individual. 
is not only working uh, for the citizens of Dallas County, but also working and being paid uh, outside of the funds or taxpayer dollars. I got it. Okay. I, so I hire someone to represent yes. me when I'm paying for that with my money on yes. something unrelated, and then I get the county to hire that person to represent you. Want, you, you think that should be disclosed? Yes. I got you. Okay. Yes. Well, I think I, it's only fair um, because then the question becomes whether or not are you paying the lawyer or is a, is a lawyer incorporating his fee within what he's charging Dallas County? Uh, I, that's that's uh, a I great think point. For full disclosure, at least it should be disclosed. Uh, but I am not trying to keep lawyers out of business and represent the commissioners or me because we all know uh, that we can generate a lot of business as individuals. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, but it should at least be disclosed. But, but. Thank you. That sounds right. reasonable to me. Any discussion on that? Any? And Mr. Watkins, I, I do want to <clears throat> thank you for um, uh, the forum uh, a week ago with regards to the, your executive um, staff and what we consider to be a, a new venture uh, sure. with regards to um, how we manage and become smart in terms of how we manage this whole criminal justice system. Uh, you guys are, 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 are the key. You're along with thank the you. judges. It's a new day. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And, and let me let me echo that. How proud I am of every single person um, involved in jail population and the work that they're they're doing. If we've got any criminal district judges or, or sheriffs, uh, deputies, anybody out there, well, I see Angela King out there. I, I'm proud of all of everyone and, and the work that that they're doing on that. Yes. Uh, just question. So to recap. Uh, Honorable Watkins will, you know, add the language to the transparency rules, and I think he just yeah. walked out. We'll I'll do it for him. Okay. I'll do, I'll do it. Okay. I'll st I'll st My office right. will take responsibility of drafting that up and running past him. Sounds good. Okay. So we will add that. Everybody's involved. Sure. Okay. Shay. No problem. Shay, we, we, we got it. We'll, we're working okay. with purchasing, county clerk, district attorney, legal advisor, budget, IT, all departments to start bringing all these items forward. With the cost and timeline. Cost timelines, all that good stuff. Thank you. Okay. okay. Item three, human resource, civil service, 3A, that court orders on your formal agenda is item number 20. 3B, court orders on your formal agenda is item number 23. 3C, that item is number 21 on your formal agenda. And 3D, that item is number 22. Item 3E, recommends approval of the policies in your briefing and county departments for 30-day review and comment. Item 4, information technology, recommends approval of the contract with Lilacs Technologies for the services of Mr. Mark Brooks as a senior system analyst. Item 5, purchasing, 5A, that court order is on your formal agenda. I believe that was the one that we pulled. Uh, actually, that's the next one, 5B, court order is on your formal agenda. That's item number 31 that was pulled. That will be back at a later date. Item six, public works. Six How much eight. later? Uh, it will be uh, the meeting will be on February third. We'll have it on that following Tuesday, which will be eight, February eighth. Okay. Okay. Item six, public works. Six A recommends proceeding with negotiation with the two highest rated firms for a fair and reasonable fee for IDIQ subsurface utility engineering services. Item 6B, recommends the exception of the contract with urban engineers, execution of a contract with urban engineers group. For MCIP Project 10221, North Haven, North Central Link. Item 7, Planning and Development, recommends allocating a new round of neighborhood state <laughs> funds to targeted neighborhoods in Lancaster and select Dallas area habitat to administer these funds. Item 8, Commissioner's Court Administration, 8A, recommends approving the addition of a background check to the eligibility requirements for board and committee appointments to be utilized at discretion of individual court members. I don't know if Dr. Garcia has any additional comments on that item. No, I just wanted to thank you and your office for putting the item together. Colleagues, I think it's very uh, self-explanatory. The only thing that really changes is that, uh, you know, our appointees will be requested to um, submit. Uh, submit a form, which is also included in our briefing. You can see it right here. Very simple. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Uh, pretty much be allowing the county to do a background investigation form. So the requirements that no, they don't own taxes, um, you know, will be on top of what the form indicates. And I think it just brings more 
uh, accountability to our appointees and to the commissioner's court as well. And I, uh, as uh, I believe we talked about, the the person that would be considered for an appointment would also uh, agree to submit to a background check if they were to be considered. Yes, yes. and that's exactly what it is. Yes. And, uh, and again, thank you all. I think this is a step forward. Um, the reality is, is that trust but verify. <laughs> Always with me. Item 8B recommends a discretionary exemption from the competitive procurement process as allowed by local government code to purchase, repair, and upgrade services for buildings identified in your briefing with hydroelectric, communications concept, design systems groups, adaptic, and metroplex control system. And Mr. Martin, I uh, just, I have a, a real uh, concern about co sole source contracts in, in general. And I understand the rationale after, after reading this, that this is ongoing work and doesn't, shouldn't be disrupted. But I do think we need to have extra scrutiny of sole source contracts because, you know, there can be mischief uh, with those type of contracts. And so I think it's, it's something that really the, the court needs to be very aware of when it's a sole source contract. And I agree. And those do have to come to you all automatically. Yeah, really. They do require a court order before somebody can see the sole source designation. And it, and it needs to specifically say this is a sole source designation. We don't have to. Nine budget, nine A, conference travel training request. We have some county judge, county clerk, district clerk, exercise and culture show, and services. Item 9B, hiring freeze exceptions, probate court number three, district attorney, and county auditor. Item 9C, that quota was in the formal agenda. Item number 16, and 9B, that quota was in the formal agenda. Item number 15, and judge that complete the briefing agenda. If there are no questions or information or miscellaneous, we have one speaker listed. Uh, is Mr. Terry James here? Is there, is our speaker here, Terry James? I, I don't see that our our, our speaker uh, is here, so uh, we will now uh, uh, recess for our for our closed session. Mm -hmm.